everyone, it's Christina from prettydistressed.com and I am coming to you from my dining room, aka my workspace right now. Um, I'm in between some pretty big projects. I'm working on this dining room table right now. And I have two hutches that I'm hoping to refinish here in the next couple weeks. So I thought while I'm working on some of those bigger projects, I would show you guys my chalk painting kit and kind of some of the tools that I have for anybody who might be interested in refinishing a piece or just thinking about it. Just wanted to show you some of the stuff that goes into it because um, you kind of do have to have a lot of things. Um, so first off, I use Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, it's the only paint that I've used so far and I really like it so I haven't tried anything else. Um, what's really cool about this paint is that you don't really have to prep a piece. Um, the only thing you really need to do is clean it off with some soap and water. You don't need to sand or um, put a primer on it or anything else. And Everything I've painted so far, I've done about 10 pieces. Um, I haven't had any issues with flaking or peeling or chipping or anything um, unless I've been going for that look. So I really like it. Um, um, some good colors to start with. Um, a really good one is Old White. Um, it's kind of an antique white. It's not going to be a pure white. It's a little bit more creamy, um, but it goes with everything and looks good throughout the house. So I think that's a really good color to have. And another one I started with was Paris Gray, which is just a light gray that again is really versatile and goes with a lot of things. And I just recently added um, Duck Egg Blue to my collection, which is a light blue with a little bit of a green tint to it. Um, and I've done that on some accent pieces and I'm going to be using that on the hutch for the back of the um, shelving area there. So that's like fun to have a little pop of color once you start getting a little bit more involved. But I think if you're going to pick one color to start with, I would do Old White um, or Paris Gray just depending on which way you want to go because they're just really versatile and, and work with a lot of things and they're really pretty. So that would be my take. Um, Another thing you're also going to need are the waxes, and I, again, I use Amy Sloan Wax because um, I think it's really good. Uh, the clear wax is just going to be kind of to give you a finish to protect your piece so the paint won't chip off. And then the dark wax is going to be for um, antiquing and distressing and making your piece look older. So um, if you're just thinking about trying out a piece and you're not really sure if you want to get into the whole dark wax thing, I started out just buying a clear wax and an old white. Those are the first two things that I bought. Um, so that's not that big of an investment. The paint is um, about $34, $35 for a pint like this. And then the waxes are $10 less than that, around $25 um, from a stockist in your area. So just depending on how much you want to invest, um, you can always just start with a clear wax. You don't have to dark wax pieces, but I love dark wax. It's, it's really cool and you can do a lot of things with it. So that's just my take. Um, my next thing, brushes. I don't have any Annie Sloan brushes. Um, they're really expensive. Maybe one day I can afford some, um, but I kind of just started off with this purdy brush. Um, I have, it's a 100% it's natural white bristles and if you go to like Home Depot or Ace Hardware one of those stores they kind of have their brushes ranked uh, good better best and this is a best brush um, I think it ran around like 15 or 16 dollars and the Annie Sloan brushes are like 30 to 40 dollars so I just started off with this because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or not and it works really well just the natural bristles hold the paint really well and I've been really happy with it and I get a sash brush that has the angle so that you can get in the crevices and all that really well. So this is this has done really well for me. I also have a smaller just synthetic cheapo brush that if I need to get work in detailing like here I have like this little flower that I need to get in some crevices. I like to have like a smaller brush to do that and the synthetic one works really fine for that. Um, this bigger brush is my dusting brush. Once I distress and sand, I use this to clean off. And this is just like a cheap synthetic brush too. Um, I will tell you I accidentally finished a piece with this brush. I don't, I, was, I don't know what I was doing. I meant to pick up this brush and I painted the whole piece with this brush. And it did like, it was going on kind of different. And I was like, what is going on? And after I finished the piece, I realized that I had used this brush. Um, and actually, it, it's a really great piece. It's my Goodwill um, dresser, if you want to look that up on the blog. 
and I love it and I did some really heavy distressing and it just it has a lot more paint streaks in it but you can use a cheap brush don't kill me Annie Sloan and people who I don't know who know her and really stick to her um, her advice because I don't think she would really want you using a brush like this but it worked for me so if, again if you're just starting out and you don't really want to invest like $200 in your track painting kit try just try like a, a cheap brush and don't invest in a expensive brush but uh, a part where you want to invest in good brushes is wax brushes um, you can apply wax with cheesecloth or a t-shirt but uh, wax is really tricky it's still I'm still getting a hold on wax and it can be really tricky so I I find that the wax brushes make it a whole lot easier um, this big wax brush again it has like the natural bristles it's really flat on top it's really stiff um, and it, you just dunk it like right in your wax and kind of go in, in big circles on the top and this has just helped me with the waxing process um, so I would recommend doing it I also have a smaller one uh, for my dark wax you don't want to mix these because then you mix your waxes and you don't want dark wax in your clear wax because if you're trying to do like just a white piece and you don't want any dark wax on it if you mix brushes you're gonna get both on there and that will be bad um, and these are really easy to clean I just use Murphy's oil soap and it conditions them and cleans them at the same time and I pretty much clean them every time I use them so this one the big one I got on amazon.com um, it's made by chalk paint pro brushes if you just want to search that on Amazon and this one is a waxine brush they also make a wax cell brush that's big like this um, and I got this from my local stockist here um, any slow paint is only sold by stockists which are usually at interior refinishing stores or just stores that have to do with interior design um, or refinishing furniture and you can just find your closest supplier by going to AnnieSloan.com and that's what I did. Um, and the only other brush I have is just this really small um, detail brush that I got in like a pack of five brushes at um, Hobby Lobby uh, that I use for like acrylic paint and stuff and this I use just to get like I have this really thin detail in mind on this table here and really wanted that covered so I went in there with this brush um, and stenciling I use this for just any like really little crevices that I want to deal with that I can't get with a bigger brush or I don't want to make a big mess with I use this little guy so that's always helpful to have um, other things that I have are just like things that you can have that make it easier but you don't have to have them um, I have a little paint can opener which makes it really easy to open my paint um, at the same time I have a hammer in my kit really handy to close up my paint really tight because you don't want this stuff to dry out it's expensive I love it I treat it like it's a little baby so um, whenever I'm not using it I make sure that that lid is closed really tight at the end so I like to just have my hammer here so I'm not running around looking for one and then forget to close it up really well um, I also have just a few little like plastic containers that I keep from takeout and stuff like that in case I want to mix colors and make um, a custom color so it's nice to have those um, in terms of distressing which you're gonna want to do a lot with this chalk paint because you're going for like kind of like an old world uh, rustic farmhouse chippy shabby look which I love um, you're gonna use a lot of sandpaper to kind of rub the edges down um, and make that look old so I have a sanding block which is basically just this big black thing. Mine's 3M, you can get them at Home Depot and any, any hardware store is gonna have them. And it has little spikes in there that you just stick the paper in and clamp it down. And then I have a variation of papers. I use 220, oh, so I use 220 to get brush, brush strokes out. It's very fine, it's just for finishing. And I either use, depending on how much I wanna do distressing wise, I have 100 grit which is really good and 150 which are both medium grits that distress really well um, so I like to have a mix of of fine and coarse and medium and I also have uh, some fine steel wool which you find in the section with the sandpaper and I use this when I'm doing um, dark wax and this technique I learned from 
Kristen Benston at uh, blueeggbrownnest.com. She's amazing. She's a lot better than me. So if you want to learn more about chalk painting, I would definitely check her out. Um, but she does a technique where when she puts on her dark wax, she goes right over it with the steel wool um, to kind of to blend that in and work with the distressing. And I found that that works really well for me. So I always have some of that. And then the last couple things I have... Um, for buffing your wax, I have cheesecloth because it's lint free. Um, sometimes I use cheesecloth too to take off paint or rub paint in because it's porous and it works really well with doing some different techniques with the paint. You can also use t-shirts and sheets. I use that to buff my pieces as well, but I always like to have some of this store-bought stuff for those other um, painting techniques, but you can use it to wax as well. And then I have some scissors just to be able to open my stop and some husband's phone line is ringing, excuse me. Then I have some tape um, just in case I need to tape any portions off if I'm painting in two different colors, just regular painter's tape. And then I keep some plastic spoons in here just to be able to mix my colors and mix my paint up and to mix my wax. And I also keep um, a stack of paper plates and I use these for waxing and my waxing technique and this paper plate thing I learned from um, Cindy at simplyreinvented.com. There are lots of people that have blogs on chalk painting so you can learn all sorts of things by just searching the web for them but um, Cindy at Simply Reinvented takes a plate and does her wax on the plate and then kind of rubs in her wax and it makes your wax last a lot longer and go a lot further. So I always use paper plates. So I have a stack in here so that I'm not stealing them from the kitchen and so that the kids aren't stealing my plates um, that I need for waxing. So this is my chalk paint kit. Um, your chalk paint kit can look whatever way you want it to. Um, I'll try to do some pricing and um, links to where I bought my stuff. Um, so you guys can see that. And I also have this little caddy that my father-in-law gave me, which is super nice because I can just put all my stuff in here and just haul it around wherever I need to, whatever I'm working on. So I find that super helpful too. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching my first video vlog. Um, and I'm looking forward to maybe doing some more of these. So thanks for listening. Um, check out prettydistress.com. Until next time.